What's going on YouTube? My name is Ray and I'll be taking x-rays. Welcome to my turf, my court, my playground. What do you say we work on some positioning? Let's go, let's get it. So uh, we're looking at your neck, correct? Yes. All right. So we're gonna stand here. I'm gonna actually demonstrate what I need to have you do, okay? You're gonna be standing here, left side against the board. You're gonna be facing this way. I want you to move all the way to your left until you touch this board. And then just take your breath in and take your breath out. Just relax your shoulders down, okay? So try not to sway around. Just gonna kind of lean against it, but not totally lean against it. Just kind of keep your head up straight, okay? And I'll kind of position you from there. Do you have any questions? All right, go ahead and stand right over there, please. There you go. We're gonna move forward towards me. A little bit, a little, little bit more. There you go. Kind of move to your left until you touch that board. There you go. I'm gonna go ahead and look at me here. Sorry if my hands are cold. There you go. Great, very good. Just hold still there. Get everything lined up to your height. Back just a tad. There you go. Okay. Oh, very still. Okay. Go ahead and relax. We're gonna turn to your left, we're gonna rotate your hips to your left. There you go. I'm gonna get you, uh, go ahead and get closer to the board there for me. There you go. We're gonna turn. Yep, yeah, we're gonna slide over to your left a little bit. Move your feet with you. There you go. Hold very still right there. And then we're gonna turn your chin to your right. Don't move your torso, just turn your chin to your right. Just rotate. There you go. Chin up just a little bit. There you go. Great. Hold still right there for me. your right side against that board kind of in that same angle so yeah just about that I'll kind of move you around I'm gonna slide over to your left there you go I'm gonna rotate you just a little bit more there you go I'm gonna slide over to your right and then without moving your torso again move your chin to your left rotate your chin to your left Just a little bit. There you go. Okay. Now this is gonna be kind of weird. I'll have you on your uh, your back against the board. So we're gonna visualize the uh, top of your neck, C1, C2. In order to do that, I need to have you open your mouth as wide as you can here, okay? Not just yet, just shortly, okay? When I tell you to close your mouth, don't move your head, just close your jaw, because I may need to make some minor adjustments, okay? Does that kind of make sense? Yes. Yeah, okay. If you have any questions, just let me know. So I'm just gonna get everything lined up to your height here. still there pretty good okay. okay 
you want to open your mouth as wide as you can there. A little bit wider if you can, great. Hold very still. Close your mouth, don't move your head. Okay. Now, we're gonna tilt your chin up for me. There you go. Close your eyes there, sorry. You can open your eyes if you'd like. Close your eyes there, and then chin up for me. All the way a little bit more, there you go, good. Just gonna slide this here. still okay so we're gonna leave your left hand on the bar there we're gonna drop your right arm down to your side and do you have any uh, issues with your shoulders pretty no. flexible there yeah okay good so uh, what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna kind of uh, open up your shoulder joints there so basically um, if I'm going through your shoulder there it's kind of too dense so I'm just gonna kind of open it up here okay so just leave your arm down to your side put your left hand on that bar I'm gonna lift this up a little bit uh, the lower one here there you go you okay and then I'm just gonna reach for your toes when you're right on. There you go. Kind of feel that stretch there. Relax, we're all done. All right, sir. So uh, we're looking at your neck, correct? Yes. All right. So we're gonna stand here. I'm gonna actually demonstrate what I need to have you do, okay? You're gonna be standing here, left side against the board. You're gonna be facing this way. As I mentioned before in my knee tutorial, when I'm at the wall, Bucky, I like to demonstrate to my patients what I need to have them do. What I failed to demonstrate in this tutorial is when I have my patient take a breath in and out and relax her shoulders down to get a better visual of C7. I also do not give my patients breathing instructions for the C spine, as I've had history of bad luck with patient movement. I then get my patient roughly in the area where I want them, move them forward or backwards until the vertical crosshair of the tube intersects the mid-coronal plane of the neck. Then adjust the wall bucky and tube to the patient's height until the central ray reaches mid-neck where C4 is. Good. I then cock the tube to have the vertical crosshair intersect the EAM. This adjusts the collimation so it runs parallel with the spine to avoid clipping of anatomy and unnecessary exposure and scatter. Okay, go ahead and relax.
I shoot my C-spines PA to limit dose to the patient's radiosensitive organs. So I angle my tube caudal 15 degrees. I aim for C4 and then line my bucky to the tube. I rotate my patient into a LAO and then RAO. When I position for my obliques, I make sure to have them move their feet with them so they don't just rotate or tilt their upper half. Reason being, if just their upper half is rotated or moved, they'll begin to rotate or move back which will cause a repeat. I decrease my OID and then give my patient clear instructions not to rotate their torso but just their chin and make final adjustments. right side against that board kind of even that same angle so yeah just about that I'll kind of move you around I'm gonna slide over to your left there you go I'm gonna rotate you just a little bit more there you go I'm gonna slide over to your right and then without moving your torso again move your chin to your left rotate your chin to your left Tweak your head a little bit there. Okay. And then down just a little bit. There you go. Since this is a tricky position for most patients, I played around with some instructions until I developed one that helped them understand exactly what I need them to do during and after I shoot the x-ray. I found most patients would move after I shot the x-ray and after the fact I noticed I had a repeat, making fixing it more challenging. The direction I give them now gives me control of the patient after the x-ray is shot, just in case I need to fix a repeat and also gives the patient more comfort of closing their mouth instead of having them hold it open while I evaluate my image. To position my patient, I get my collimation into a rectangle so I can align my tube with my bucky. This room is automatic, but you get the idea. I then align the central ray and bucky roughly where I want it near the mouth. Position my patient so the patient's MSP is lined up with the vertical crosshair of the tube. Feel for the base of the patient's skull and align it with the incisors and have them perpendicular to the bucky. Place my marker under the ear, bring in the collimation from side to side, have them open their mouth as wide as possible, and make sure the central ray enters midpoint of the open mouth. To avoid patient motion, I make the exposure as fast as possible. Just like any other x-ray, you should have your technique already set before your position. That way, I just have to run back there and expose. Once I make the exposure, I tell my patient they can close their mouth, but do not move their head as I evaluate my image. Close your chin up for me. I tilt my patient's chin up to get the occlusal plane perpendicular to the bucky. Angle my tube 15 degrees cephalic, get the central ray going through C4, and adjust my collimation. I like to do my odontoid, then AP in this order because I like to go from caudal angle to perpendicular, then cephalic. Instead of going from caudal, passing perpendicular to go to cephalic, and then back to perpendicular. It just feels like I'm messing around the tube less. And if I need a fuchs, I'm already at a cephalic angle. Okay, we're all done. Go ahead and close your eyes there and then chin up. I perform somewhat of a modified fuchs. In normal fuchs, you have the patient tilt their chin up to basically have their MML perpendicular to the bucky. In normal modified fuchs, you have the patient in a neutral position and angle the tube 35 to 45 degrees cephalic. The central ray in either position is parallel to the MML. What I do is have them tilt their chin up to an angle between the two positions and angle 30 degrees cephalic, which is about parallel to their MML, and aim between the gonians and right under the chin. Bow. hand on the bar there we're gonna drop your right arm down to your side this is footage I got from my t-spine tutorial 
hints why the hands are ready on the bar. Yeah. Okay, good. So, uh, I always ask my patient if they have any issues with their shoulders because we're about to give them a stretch. I demonstrate what I'm going to have them do because this is an odd position and most tend to tilt their body to the right. Do that here, okay? So, just leave your arm down to your side. Put your left hand on that bar. I'm going to lift this up a little bit. Uh, the lower one here. There you go. Okay? And then I'm just gonna reach for your toes when you're right on. There you go. Kind of feel that stretch there. Good. I angled five degrees caudal since I felt like he wasn't as mobile with his shoulders. Alright, relax, we're all done. When I evaluate my open mouth odontoid repeat, I first locate the odontoid and see if my sunshine ray is aiming at it. You can do this by drawing imaginary lines diagonally across the screen. This tells me that I need to move the central ray up just a bit, but that's not all that needs to be fixed. The odontoid is being covered by the incisors. This tells me that the patient's head is tilted too forward. I need to tilt their head back just slightly. When fixing your repeat, you need to understand that the next anatomy does not move if you give your patient detailed instructions and if they do not move. Most of the time, all you need to move is your central ray and tilt the patient's head. Although, Every now and then, you'll find a patient or anatomy that requires you to also angle your tube. I could not find another personal repeat that demonstrates a backward tilt, but I found this online. The base of the skull is projected over the odontoid. This tells me that the patient's head is tilted too far back. They need to tilt their head forward slightly. I'm not exactly sure what the exact collimation is, so I can't comment on the positioning of the central ray. I remember when I was a student, I was afraid of spine work. but I've seen it as a challenge and I eventually started to love it. You're only as strong as your weakness. You might not be the best at a certain exam, but strive to be well-rounded. Spend some extra time on practicing and understanding the ins and outs of that certain exam. Remember, you cannot be perfect. Practice makes progress, especially in this field. Not everyone's anatomy or condition is gonna make for the ideal exam. Sometimes you can only do your best, so do your best. Don't be that tech. Don't be the one they call lazy. Do you really want that reputation? But as always, if this video gave you any value, press that like button, subscribe for more x-ray content, share this video with any other classmates that may need help. Remember, you have greatness within you. I'll see you at the top. My name is Ray, and I'll be taking x-rays. Peace.